Uh, we will be starting with the uh, keynote speech on behalf of the European Commission, provided by Manuel Mateo. He's uh, the acting head of unit for cloud and software at DG Connect. Um, he will let us know where do we stand currently. We will have a look at the EU cloud market. Where do we want to go? What are the targets for the digital decade? Uh, where are we now and what goes next? So I would like you to uh, give a huge round of applause for, for Manuel. And the stage is yours. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, it works. Yeah, more or less. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you had a, a good lunch. I certainly did. Um, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Daniel. Um, my apologies for skipping the, for missing the uh, uh, this morning 8 a.m. Uh, uh, 9 a.m. Uh, uh, appointment, but I hope fully uh, uh, catch up now. Um, it's a real pleasure to uh, to uh, to be here uh, uh, with you today. A big thanks for the Nexus Forum. I know we. We, in the end, pay the bill, but, uh, but you pay the burden of, uh, of organizing. So uh, a great thank you, including for the last uh, changes. And of course, a great thank you to, uh, to Anna to uh, uh, be your regular point of, um, of contact. Um, all our CSAs do have, um, uh, all our support actions do have this type of, uh, of gatherings. Um, and very often, they go unnoticed. Um, uh, today is not the case. Uh, it's probably the best day throughout five years political cycle to organize uh, something in, um, in, uh, uh, in Brussels uh, and certainly to hear where we are and where we're uh, heading. As you know, since uh, two days now, uh, we have a, a candidate new commissioner, executive vice president or whatever the long title is. Um, uh, dedicated to, uh, to, uh, to digital. I'll say a few words about it uh, in a moment and, and maybe help uh, the ones who, have, uh, who are more into the real thing, the real tech, as opposed to the uh, political bubble thing, um, uh, to catch up a, a bit on that because I think there's a lot of very interesting things uh, uh, around the corner. So this was me, this is you, and this is the plan for, um, for today. Um, some of the slides I'm going to show you are, um, I mean, a lot are our own. They borrow on the knowledge from, uh, from many uh, uh, external sources, of course. Um, but quite a few of them, not, uh, uh, not all of them, are the ones that ended up in the hands of the, of the commissioner 48 hours ago when we physically ended the, uh, um, the, um, uh, the, 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 the briefing, uh, the briefing books as we call them. Um, the, um, um, the where we are today, I think you know very well, and uh, so I'll quickly go through this and I'll then take questions as well because I've been told that you're a no, uh, question prone audience, which is, uh, which is good. Um, the cloud market trends, you, you know them, you work in this, so I'm, I'm not going to repeat uh, uh, that for the nth time um, to you. Um, in short, um, Europe has, um, uh, um, uh, I think there's uh, three really questions that, that, that appear here. The first one is, does Europe have the right um, capacity to face tomorrow's computational needs, AI, but not only. The answer is certainly not today. And so you have plenty of sub-questions that arrive. Is it a problem of investment? Is it a regulatory problem? Is it a problem of red tape to deploy data centers? Because it all starts with, uh, with that. Uh, I'm, I'm flipping without um, uh, commenting them one by one. And then there's the second question, which is the um, um, uh, who owns and, and who's behind those, um, uh, those uh, uh, computation capacity. Uh, you know the figures, here are some. This is extracted from the Draghi report that I'll explain again in a, in a, in a few uh, uh, moments more in, uh, more in detail. And the figures, you know, vary a bit from the source you look at, but they by and large all go into the, into the same direction. And they go into a direction of um, um, 
a growth which is still exponential in cloud. It was the case 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, and I take five years brackets because this is our political cycle. But this is as well where the um, uh, kind of informed uh, guesstimate as to the future needs uh, reach. I mean, beyond five years, um, it takes four years to, um, uh, to build a, um, a data center, including permitting, and maybe four or five years. So um, this is uh, about the, the, the reasonable um, uh, time perspective that, that one can have. And the figures that we have is that this exponential uh, growth is still uh, exponenting. I mean, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the S is still growing as opposed to start to, uh, to flattening. Um, the, um, the last question is, so there is a, the, sorry, the second big question is this question of, of who owns and, and it's okay. And I think in the, the, the message in Europe has always been as long as you follow our rules, as long as you are clean, as lo long as you know you're respective of uh, you're respective of um, um, uh, respectful of uh, Europeans' um, values and norms and, and rules, um, uh, we are open for uh, for business. But there's a moment where the uh, question of autonomy kicks in as well. Um, uh, the questions, uh, Mr. Draghi in his report speaks about the public sector. I think I prefer, it's not a commission document, it's an external uh, report, so it's convenient for us to say, well, I disagree with this tiny bit or, or, or the other. Um, I think the, the question is not only the public sector or, or is a slightly different boundary. The uh, trash collection uh, times of uh, in my neighborhood, it's public sector information, but no one really cares. Um, 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 transaction in, in the uh, uh, interbanking system is highly sensitive, um, but is not public sector. So the, the question of sensibility is not exactly, does not follow exact uh, the, the public um, private um, uh, divide. So this, this question of where we are is a little bit uh, common to all the analyses I see uh, left and right. Where do we want to go? This has not changed, and this is quite clear in the, the mission letters that the commissioners got uh, this week. Um, those are the figures of the Digital Decade Report. All the things I'm showing are public, and um, Daniel, I'm sure you will share the slides then afterwards with, uh, um, with everyone. This is a lazy cut and paste of our web page with um, two of the four axes of, uh, of measurement. And for the even more uh, uh, lazy, I, I put two green arrows to the targets that uh, 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 me and my team uh, uh, follow. Um, it's the uh, 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 first the deployment. It's a question of infrastructure, the deployment of edge nodes, and then it's a question of adoption, the question of uh, uptake by businesses in um, in uh, in Europe. Let's look at uh, this a little bit more in detail. Um, the objective is still to reach 75% of uptake by uh, the, the private sector. Um, private sector being defined as anyone with more than 10 employees, so maybe not your single uh, person company, uh, plumber, uh, but uh, 10 people company, I think that's already quite a low uh, um, uh, threshold. Those are the figures of, um, they date back to uh, the 23, but they're part of the, the report we've published this summer. This is the cloud adoption, and you see that Europe is at around 45. That's the, uh, um, uh, those are the columns to the very left. Um, what it shows, and this is where the uh, slides are not in the right order, is that there's a lot of discrepancies in between geographies, but as well sectors and, of course, size of companies. I'm quite sure if you take a, um, uh, the Eurostock, uh, 600 largest companies in Europe, they're all in the cloud and possibly, probably in multi-cloud and experimenting quite a few of, um, of the complicated technical things, but, but of course, the smaller ones, it's a s separate story. Um, <clears throat> The edge target, which is um, those infamous 10,000 um, uh, climate edge nodes uh, deployment in Europe. Um, the 
figure is not um, um, too bad, and the deployment is is growing. But when you look at the fine print, a lot of those are still, um, um, how do you say, uh, in experimental mode. Um, it's somehow a little bit more than experimental. If it was only purely experimental, you would have a handful, 10, 20, 50. Here we're talking about hundreds, so it's it's like pre, it's industrial but pre-commercial. It's somewhere in uh, in between. Um, you see a lot of discrepancies in between uh, member states as well. I think it has more to do um, with the local willingness of companies to experiment than a particular public policy or a um, particular predisposition to uh, to one or, or the other uh, uh, behavior. Um, this um, uh, uh, deployment, so this target is still the, the same for 2030, but as I will explain in a second, um, there will be at some point in the coming years uh, um, uh, an evolution of, uh, of that. Um, what did we do already? And I promise not to bore you more with the five years that have, uh, that have passed, but this is at least to put on the screen um, what we have already done and achieved. Um, I've put a, a modest uh, asterisk with the things that are not yet uh, fully concluded. I can spend an hour on each of those topics, so keep the questions uh, flying. Um, investments have been, of course, one of the, the, the big things. Um, um, uh, the Nexus Forum being one of them. Uh, Simple and Dome being our two biggest attempts uh, in, in single chunks of efforts uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to progress, um, but in research, our grants are much smaller. There was no room here to list them all, um, but I've heard uh, during lunchtime plenty of uh, um, buzzes about um, what is cognitive cloud and, and all, those, uh, all those things. The important project of common European interest, uh, of course, uh, about which there's a couple of uh, dedicated sessions uh, tomorrow, and I've seen a hidden secret meeting uh, 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 upstairs with an arrow, so um, the little mouses will uh, report what they hear there. Um, um, but this is, in monetary amount, this is the biggest effort that Europe is doing. Um, uh, the European part of the effort was uh, is uh, was to allow member states to spend their money, so because it's a state aid scheme, so the, it's not European money for once, um, um, so it's not European uh, uh, budget. But leaving the, the 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 who pays the bill aside, this is the biggest uh, uh, technological effort where. Um, we did the um, uh, kickoff back in uh, March, and where the efforts of coordination are, are probably the, the biggest. Um, UCS, the Cyber Certification Scheme on, uh, on Cloud Services, more than an hour I can spend on that. The Energy Efficiency uh, Directive, uh, last Sunday was the first deadline for data centers in Europe to report their energy consumption and efficiency uh, metrics to a European database that we will now uh, look at and uh, possibly come up with minimum performance standards and labeling requirements. And those are more the supply side and on demand side regulatory elements on the Data Act, but this is just the headline. The content is um, uh, quite uh, um, more juicy. There's a part on switching charges and standard contractual clauses, which is maybe more commercial and less for today's audience. But the first part, the recognition of interoperability standards and specifications, um, this is key. This is something that has been so far flying below the radar. The base, legislative base, is now there. Um, we are. Uh, we've signed and done the kickoff um, still in September, so already behind us, but in September, of um, the uh, support, um, we're getting a, a additional support to help us devise how those, this repository of uh, standards and uh, specifications can uh, be populated, so there's a bit of technical part and procedural part, which is not thrilling. But I think what is really interesting for you is that there's a new kid on the block. It doesn't all need to go anymore 
through uh, standardization organizations. A lot we should go and will still go and uh, very important, but the Data Act opens the door to recognize de facto standards in uh, uh, de facto specifications as de facto standards. So um, um, uh, keep an eye on this line. This is uh, going to grow in importance over the coming uh, month and well uh, uh, in, in 25. The Digital Markets Act, sorry for the acronym, my mistake, and then the Cloud Rulebook and the Public Procurement Guidelines, which again I can say a few, a few words. What comes next, um, as leave behind, I've left uh, the, the main cuts and pastes of the um, so-called Dra Draghi report, but that's the real name, the future of European competitiveness, um, a, a thrilling uh, report. For once, not helpful to fall asleep because the, um, um, the, the challenges ahead are really um, daunting. And for once in a report, you have both sides of the equation on t as to what to do it and how to do it. Um, it's, uh, as I said earlier, not a commission uh, document, but it will uh, serve as, a, as one of the foundations of the next, uh, of the next uh, college. Um, uh, give it a read, because it's um, uh, the, the, here I took the screenshot of the part A, but the part B where the details are, are laid down the uh, connectivity and the cloud part are respectively eight pages, and it's well indicated, well summarized, very readable. Uh, it's targeted more at politicians, but you will, um, you will get as a scientist and practitioners more an idea of, of uh, um, um, that part of the thinking. I skipped the, the fine print. It was just as a leave. Uh, behind um, um, uh, for you, and this is already all history because this was last week. But this week on Tuesday, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Anna Virkunen, um, you probably, or many of you might know her as an MEP. She's just uh, obviously finishing if she's to be, uh, if her candidacy is meant to be confirmed, which we all hope. Um, uh, she's been an MEP for the last 10 years in the ITRE committee. Uh, she was specialized notably in questions of uh, research. So she knows this area uh, very well. She has made public statements on how much she's attached to, uh, to research, to fundamental research uh, um, as well. Um, so drop the candidate uh, in, by the time the, the, the parliament confirms her, but um, she is our new uh, digital uh, face in, uh, in Europe. I've copied and pasted and cut down a few words, but without uh, modifying anything, um, the relevant parts that I thought would be interesting for you from a mission letter. Again, the mission letter, they're all public since Tuesday. Uh, Google had troubles on still yesterday to, to find them, and, but today, if you type mission letter without even putting commission, you, uh, that's the first, uh, the first result. Um, the mission letter is an eight pages document, but the, the, the tech part is, um, must be 12, 15 uh, bullet points. I've extracted the most uh, important for you. So it's one page reading that I've even uh, um, um, uh, summarized here. What's ahead of us is um, those digital decade targets. Um, the um, mission letter said, says, please bring them to a completion. So don't deny the, the 2030 objectives, but think about the next step by 2026. So if those two uh, um, deployments are, those two targets that I mentioned earlier are not sufficient, uh, maybe not today, but it's time to start to know that there will be um, revamped or new uh, objectives. For example, we don't have one measuring the gap in between the uh, AI or, or simply the computation needs and the actual deployment. So maybe this is one that we could uh, uh, think uh, uh, about. There's plenty of lines about artificial intelligence. There's quite a, uh, 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 there's a very strong line about investment in frontier technology. I've highlighted in green the ones where um, um, Anna, my team, Valentina is here as well. Uh, we feel more empowered with and that we will be, um, 
I don't know if leading, but yes, let's not be modest today. Certainly the idea of uh, um, uh, developing a new cloud and AI act uh, to increase this deployment. So if you remember my opening first question about um, how do we do that Europe has, is processing its own data, and I'm not putting a flag on who is doing it, but just manages to process its own data, that will be the core of that, uh, of that uh, act. And as always, because we're in Europe, the, uh, innovative, the SMEs, and in particular the innovative SMEs, have got a particular uh, blink. And in this case, there's a lot of AI um, uh, startup that are looking for uh, European-built uh, capacity. Um, uh, mirroring a bit what Mr. Draghi says in his report, there's a particular angle which I was alluding earlier uh, about the public sector and in particular the sensitive aspects of the public sector. And we all know that the public procurement is uh, a huge levy. Um, um, the public investment uh, in digital technology in cloud is about 50% of, uh, sorry, public procurement in Europe is about 50% of Europe's GDP. So it stands to reason that a bit of that goes into, uh, into cloud and that the public sector has a strong voice at the moment of deciding what um, to do. Connectivity, not to, forgot, not to forget, it's our sister uh, unit next door. Um, Cybersecurity, of course, always uh, present and we have here uh, a clear mandate or a clear push by the president to finish the uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, um, uh, certification scheme on, on, on cloud and the others that are pending. Um, but there's a clear push to say this is uh, the, the, the certification schemes in plural in general are here to stay, make them work. Um, so uh, we will um, uh, take that strong impetus to bring it to a conclusion. I've put in a light green because uh, somehow it's really cloud related, um, but this is dealt by another uh, unit, the Digital um, Markets Act and the implementation. There's a Chinese wall inside of the commission, so we don't even go for coffee with, the, with those colleagues. I mean, we smile and we say, hello, what's up, how was your commute to the office when we bump uh, into them in the elevator? But we don't discuss business because this is um, pre-competition and there's a voluntarily um, a division of tasks, but they have their, um, the possibility to act on, uh, on, on cloud, so I cannot tell you where they are on, on that front, um, but again, it stands to reason that if there's uh, things to do on competition uh, uh, dimension, there is there something to do. Digital public infrastructure, okay. Um, the European Data Union strategy, it's um, the offspring or the, um, yeah, the offspring of the data strategy of five years ago, which is what gave room to uh, the EPSI, uh, the Data Act, uh, the, the marketplace, the rule book. Um, so um, why now it seems that we will have two separate uh, legislative instruments, the Cloud Act and the uh, uh, Data Union strategy. Um, uh, it, it, again, it stands to reason that the two will again be closely interlinked. Uh, so this is something to keep an eye on. Um, and finally, the promotion of uh, uh, digital norms and standards internationally. Um, um, I mentioned already the, the work on the Data Act. Um, my colleagues on connectivity have got a huge agenda on the 6G, 6G um, uh, dimension. There's a lot of work on this. Uh, in betweenness of, or the all in betweenness of connectivity and cloud, which is captured in our white paper on uh, on uh, on the future of digital networks, summarized as the famous uh, 3C. Um, so there is there are a lot of things that uh, uh, um, will concern uh, today's audience, even if uh, a shared responsibility with uh, with other colleagues. This is where we are today. Um, this is not info from six months ago. It's 48 hours, and I did the, the, the screenshots, etc. yesterday uh, evening. Sorry, Daniel, for sending the slides so late, but I couldn't have done them uh, 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 last week again. Um, so, so voila, stay tuned. The, the next weeks are, are, um, will be busy with, uh, um, with a lot of um, uh, gossips and rumors, etc. I invite you all in 
whenever that happens in the coming weeks, uh, the, um, uh, to listen to uh, the political hearing of uh, Mrs. Virkunen. Um, she will share for the first time um, her, her political uh, priorities and angles and, and actions to do, but this will be based on what the president asked her to do. So you get there a sense of where uh, um, uh, things will go. Thank you very much, and I'm a taker for any type of, uh, of question. Please raise your hand if you have a question for... Or everything was quite clear. Oh, we have a question. So, thank you very much for that. Um, Andrew Adams from Meiji University in Tokyo. I'm wondering what the plans are to uh, spread the idea and, and what ideas you have about how digital sovereignty can be promoted as a, a core common um, concept. Um, that's, of course, one of the things within the project, as, as the Japanese partner in the project is something that we're uh, very engaged in. I'm wondering what your idea is about how we can square this circle of avoiding isolationism, um, but working together with international partners so we all gain our digital sovereignty, but in a way that we can work together. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the analogy works the same in, in English, in French, the... the, the, the the French use very much this notion of cursor, depending on where you put it at one or the other extreme. Uh, a lever, maybe in English, is a, is a better word. Um, I, I, I think the answer has to do with what I, 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 I said earlier, I think without using the word of, uh, of sovereignty, but it's this question of, um, uh, you know, of openness versus autonomy and, and uh, sovereignty and how do, does all, all that fit together. Um, again, um, the, uh, um, the, the, the fact that a huge portion of the, 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 the cloud services market is, is um, uh, taken by non-Europeans is, um, um, is okay, it's a fact, huh? the, the numbers are, are, are what they are. Um, but if the companies um, um, uh, fulfill norms and, and, and rules and values, uh, European ones, um, it's, it's, um, it's okay. Um, and um, plus, I mean, this is not just a, a political line, and huh? this is enshrined in our uh, uh, World Trade Organization rules, etc. Huh? So I'm not making this up on the, on the go. Now, it, it's never... Um, I mean, for anything, for anyone in your personal life, I don't know, but uh, for a business or for anyone or any organization in Europe as a well, whole, to be fully dependent on things that you don't control. And, and that is true in the cloud sector, but that is true in many other uh, segments of the industry. And the discussions are not that different from what you hear in the, uh, um, the same room. Uh, specialists of chips would be having the same discussion, or batteries, or uh, solar panels, or, or things like this. Um, so can we afford to be completely dependent 100% in that area? I don't think so. Um, but autonomy doesn't mean that we need to control 100% of, uh, uh, of the market either. And I think uh, uh, sovereignty is, is, more, uh, is kind of more a, a personal perception of whether you're at ease with where the, the, the cursor is placed in between those, uh, um, those two extremes. Um, again, Mr. Draghi puts into this difference in between public and private sector. I would personally put it more into the, 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 this difference in between sensitive and non-sensitive. But, but here again, I'm saying something fairly generic and easy to say. Um, uh, health data in some countries is considered as super sensitive and public sector. In some others, is a uh, commercial, and I'm speaking in Europe, some other countries consider it as a private sector sensitive, yes, okay, but not that much. Well, you know, it, 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 so it, sovereignty has got this dimension of um, um, a, a personal impression uh, uh, and, and it's hard to coin a proper um, uh, definition. Autonomy works quite well, I think, in our, in our area. 
Um, my name is Antal Kuti, and I'm running an SME, but I'm also running, uh, co-running the AI uh, track in the IPCAI. So my question is very simple that, uh, and again, it's a personal opinion, but I'm looking for, <laughs> what do you think we will do differently in this new term than in the past? Because really, I mean differently that characteristically differently, <laughs> not just in uh, bullet points differently, that we have more bullet points or less and more mean, but structurally and significantly differently, because something we did not very well if we, we reached that point. We yeah. are at the at a very frustrating uh, situation as a digital uh, you know, industry right now, if you are comparing ourselves to anything. Yeah. So what is in your mind which is really to change, and what we are dropping, what we are dropping from the past, okay. you think, which we should? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I sense the real question is, oh, come on, this was all the same uh, than last time, so what has really changed? But um, so. I don't know, it takes me a bit um, on, on prepared. At least the second part, I'm not sure we will drop anything. What is clear on the first part of your question, what is new, is that so far we've not paid attention enough to the um, uh, hardware deployment, to the data center uh, deployment. It's something at European level, we've been looking at it from a pure uh, environmental and green dimension on which can explain and we've done quite a bit and we're doing more and, and there's a plan for that. Um, but there's not been any type of um, uh, common European incentive to deploy um, um, uh, such capacity. And by incentive, I'm not, I'm not saying uh, money incentive. Uh, a priori, it's a, it's a profitable business. So, you know, it's more, uh, you know, how can we facilitate that deployment provided it fulfills the green and, uh, uh, and, and clean uh, dimension. I think on that respect, we haven't done much. Uh, I hear, and there might be some uh, data center or, or in-house data center operators, uh, that it, it takes in some countries up to four years just to get the permits, plus another two years to build the, 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 the real thing, because it's, it's complicated engineering after, after all. Until so, in between the moment you have, uh, I mean, you had another year to gather the funds at the beginning. In between the moment you you start gathering the funds mm -hmm. and the moment you start processing the first payloads, it's it, in some countries it's seven years. Can we really afford that? If provided this capacity is needed, can't we do a, a bit better? So, I, you know, um, the engineering is the engineering. I'm not sure that can be uh, cut down. But can't we do better in the, in the permitting? Can't we re revert the logic saying, you know, provided you fulfill those norms, you're going to get on a fast track um, uh, um, uh, permitting, which is the case in the CHIPS Act, right? It's you, you get, if you prove your, your credentials, you get a, on a fast track for permitting. Couldn't we shave their... 12, 18, 24 months, depending on the on the country. I think this is something that we've never looked at at European level and and uh, uh, needs to be done. Um, let me think if I see another obvious uh, um, example. No, I think I think this is it. I mean, uh, uh, many of the others are continuation or going beyond, but I think this one is really new. On the dropping things, I. I don't have an obvious case. Obviously, in the investment or in research and development, but this is because the nature of the, the uh, substance evolves. There's, of course, things that we don't uh, 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 finance anymore. Uh, when I joined the commission, my first unit was called Collaborative Working Environments. OK, that's OK. We now have uh, teams and uh, all those uh, uh, things. We don't need to do research in those areas. So it's only natural that there are things that are dropped in research there. But uh, voilà, that's my uh, improvised answer to your question. Thank you very much, Manuel. And thank you, everyone, for asking questions and listening. Another la uh, Fortunately, we are short of time. So another round of applause for Manuel. Thank, thank you. you very much.